First and foremost, what is train law? The Republic Act 10963, also known as the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion Law, is enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives in Congress and signed by the President for the compliance of all Filipino residents. The President has appointed the Department of Finance for its effective implementation, while the Bureau of Internal Revenue issues implementing rules and regulations as well as advisories to provide details on and clarify the implementation of the train changes. TRAIN is the first package of the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program or CTRP which aims to redesign our tax system so that it is simpler, fairer, and more efficient for all, while also raising the funds required to invest in infrastructure and the Filipino people. Overall, the government anticipates a lower tax burden on the poor and middle class. TRAIN allows every Filipino to contribute to the funding of more infrastructure and social services to eradicate extreme poverty and reduce inequality in order to achieve prosperity for all. The Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion Law, also known as the TRAIN Tax Law, includes lowered and simplified personal income taxes, simplified estate and donor taxes, expanded the value-added tax or VAT base, adjusted oil excise taxes, adjusted automobile excise taxes, and introduced an excise tax on sweetened beverages. Prices increased for some sweetened beverages. Here's why. It's because of the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion, or train law, passed by the government for its Build, Build, Build agenda for a better Philippines. This applies an extra tax on a variety of sweetened beverages like soft drinks with high fructose corn syrup and powdered or ready-to-drink beverages that contain caloric or non-caloric sugar. Since a sachet of powdered beverage is usually equal to one liter, every sachet is affected by the tax increase. Every beverage company has to pay for that tax plus the fee to implement it. It doesn't matter what kind of drink it is, unless it's 3-in-1 coffee, milk, or 100% fruit juice, every sweetened beverage is part of this new excise tax. Now you know why your favorite sweetened beverages have increased in price. There are five tax reform packages. Package 1 aims to lower income tax rates. Package 2 aims to decrease corporate income tax rates while rationalizing or restructuring fiscal tax incentives. Package 3 reform property taxation. Package 4 reform capital income taxation. And lastly, Package 5 implements measures to mitigate government income losses from packages 1 to 4. Pros of train law First is better services and facilities. The changes as instituted by this tax reform are expected to increase revenue generation to finance the healthcare, education program, and infrastructure of the administration. Second, improve tax collection efficiency. Positive effect of train law is seen in the form of enhanced efficiency of tax collection. Tax collection process. The present system is far more efficient in dealing with issues related to compliance. Third, higher take-home pay and therefore improved spending power, particularly for those earning 40000 a month or less. And lastly, more opportunities. Individuals will generate income that will be used in the government's aggressive infrastructure projects and in improving basic services such as housing, education, and social protection. More job opportunities, better infrastructure that will lower the transport and distribution cost of goods and improved services. Income Inequality the train law adversely impacted the poorest households that required the government to assist them with the help of unconditional cash transfers of around 300 to 400 per month of for the coming 3 to 4 years. 
Higher poverty taxes due to higher property valuation. Excise taxes on sugar sweetened drinks will burden the bottom sectors, particularly those who are already tax exempt under the current taxation system and therefore will not benefit from the lowered tax rates. High revenue losses. The reform led to high loss of revenue for the government. According to the Family Income and Expenditure Survey, the losses are estimated and be around 210 billion in 2018, 223 billion in 2019 and 2022, and 238 billion in 2023. Increase in inflation. There has been a notion that this reform system will tax a poor less than a fluent segment of population. This was the information that was advertised by the government. The truth is that the imposition of additional taxes by the government are passed down to the middle and lower income class people and thereby increasing the rate of inflation. Example number one, using the new auto excise rates, the following are sample suggested retail price of selected cars. The train law made more costly automobiles, such as Toyota Land Cruiser, more affordable. This appears to be odds with the purpose of making cars more accessible to difficult Filipino. Table 1 indicates that when the new train law rates are implemented, cheaper automobiles become more expensive. Furthermore, the estimated new SRP is computed as net manufacturer's price plus excise tax plus VAT. The train law raises the cost of average low and automobile while lowering the cost of high end cars, which is an oversimplification and error. When the train law rates are applied to Toyota Innova and the Ford Everest Titanium, the results are shown in Table 1. Under the train law, both automobiles cost increase with more costly cars, the Ford Everest, seeing a faster rate of growth in suggested retail price. The, for the former approach, using fixed tax rate based on specified amount, 2% of cars under 600,000 and then combine it with predetermined monetary value that varied depending on the car's worth. To wrap it all up, the effect on automotive pricing is different under the old system versus train law system. As shown in Table 1 earlier, it is an oversimplification to say that a new law increased the cost of average or low-end automobiles while decreasing the cost of high-end cars. In addition, train simplifies the excise tax on automobiles, while the approved rates are considerably lower than original proposed. It remains that more expensive cars tax higher compared to cheap cars. The table you see shows the difference in rates under the old law and the train law. Looking at the net effect on SRP alone may give the impression that the train law is anti-progressive or pro-rich because it's decreased the suggested retail price for some expensive vehicles such as the Toyota Land Cruiser from the example on the first table. Under both systems, the tax rates and the fixed monetary amounts under the old system increase as the value of the automobile increase. In other words, both systems are progressive. Take note that the under the old system such as Land Cruiser will be taxed based on fixed amount of 512000 plus a 60% tax rate for its SRP over $2.1 million. A more objective comparison can be made using the average effective tax rate. In example, the percentage of the tax base that is effectively paid in taxes. Take a look at the average effective tax rate column in this table. It shows that the tax rates increase progressively with the increase in net importers' manufacturers' price under both the old system and the train law system. While it may be difficult to grasp or track the changes in car prices under the train law, the bottom line is change has occurred, while the immediate change is only on car prices.
The long-term change is aimed at more ambitious and noteworthy goals. It will be too simplistic or short-sighted to demand from train that vehicles become more affordable for the average Filipino. But that is not the goal of a tax or revenue measure like the train law. The value of train law comes from a desire to raise funds for government programs, as declared in train section number 2. The provision of better infrastructure, health, education, jobs, and social protection for the people.